I'm super excited to do the last haul of this year, 2022. So these are the items. As per usual, right now, I can't tell you exactly what it is. I roughly remember what I ordered, but um, as it happens. But what I do know, all of these things, I don't think there is a new product in here. These are the products that I love using, just additional colors. And yeah, I'm kind of excited to open these. And I also ordered some paper as well because I have been seriously getting into my art. I've got currently eight paintings hung in a low firm, which I pretty much turned their agency into a gallery, which looks pretty cool. Uh, if you ask me <laughs> but uh, it does look quite nice in there and it's the first experience that I have coming close to like a gallery exhibit whereas you know you, you hang your work and it just it's so it looks so good um, anyways there is three more paintings that they have requested uh, large ones so I will be working on those during December and hopefully have them ready by January to be hung. Let's look inside here. We have got Holbein acrylic gouache, few colors that I was actually meaning to buy uh, this year, but they were out of stock. So we have here Ash Blue, Viridian and Ash Rose. So they're quite neat. And then let's take them out of the box. And then I have here leaf green. So that's a color, surprisingly, I don't have. I do have leaf green in a pencil, I believe. What's this? This is apple green. I don't have leaf green with me here right now. Oh, gorgeous. Right up my street. Very nice. I was worried that they would look a bit too, like, apple green, more like then leaf green and then we have burnt sienna also a color I really wanted but it was out of stock and then this one is Mars violet which I was surprised that I didn't have it because I do like their Mars colors and I got quite a few more of the oil sticks I really enjoy working with them oh yes there is one more color sepia which I got an email from Jackson's to say that it was out of stock and they will send it to me separately so that's another color I got then I have indigo and I have sepia and these are quite exciting because I have featured um, Michael Harding watercolors in my gift guide and at that point they didn't arrive yet i didn't buy sets i just wanted to try a few individual colors and i have here neutral tint moss green and vivid blue now vivid blue um i have a bit of a connection to this color because when i went to the jackson's shop the actual shop and i filmed a tour in there like a vlog i'll try to link it up here for you to watch if you haven't they actually had promotion where if you would spend a certain amount on Michael Harding's oil paints, you would get a free, I think, five color set uh, of his new watercolors. And one of the colors was this uh, vivid blue. And I don't think it's a specific um, set that you can actually buy. Um, so I really wanted to try this color here. These are the Dalaroni FW acrylic inks, if you're new to them. And then I also have the Prussian blue. Hmm, I kind of felt like I ordered a lot more of the Sennelier sticks. I need to go back and check out. And then I have India yellow hue, which I have already by Golden, but I have it in a, uh, I think, fluid acrylic paint. So this is their heavy body and I love it because it's so beautifully transparent but I can also create texture with it. And then I have the Payne's Grey in Liquitex. I was going to get the Payne's Grey in Golden but in Liquitex it costs like a fraction 
uh, compared to golden. So if there's a color that is not too unique and a color that can be purchased in another brand, I would recommend Liquitex. They have also beautiful other colors. Um, for instance, parchment, there's a very similar color, if not identical in golden. Again, in Liquitex, you would just pay a fraction for it. I checked and I don't know why I was under the impression that I ordered more of the oil sticks. Maybe because I do want to have more colors and maybe I forgot, I don't know, but I think there's quite a few more colors that I want to add. Um, but yeah, it's all correct and I am looking forward to swatching them out for you now. And how neat is it that it's the last page left of this? Um, sketchbook. So we're ending 2022 with the last page of the haul and let's see when did we start. It started in September. Surely that's not this September. It was 2021 so September 21. So it took me about a year and a couple, a few months to uh, finish this sketchbook but how gorgeous do these look? So these are the antelope brown and burnt amber which are the FW acrylic inks. This was the first page that I swatched on. I love the colors. Very very vibrant. Okay so what shall we start with? I think I'll start with watercolor first and then I will do the Dalaroni FW, then I'll do the gouache, acrylics, and I'll finish with the oil paints. For my brush, I'm using my beloved Jackson's Quill Tan Zero. You can't even see it, but I know it because I have a few of those brushes. They're fantastic for any medium and um, yeah, great brush. Okay, let's start with Vivid Blue and this is... PW4, PW6, PB15, colon 3, and PG7. So this is one of those uh, beautiful mixes that you could mix yourself, but it's convenient to have it in the tube. It's like a sky blue, milky type of color. Very beautiful. It's going to be opaque. Love it thinking what sort of swatches I'll go just kind of freestyle today so beautiful but you can see on the water loads of white in there and then we have moss green now this was an interesting color and this trip oh, oh, oh it's escaping and this trip is not going to be able to represent it because it's such a multitude of um, pigment separation here. So this is the moss green which has PY150, my favorite yellow, PB29 and PR209. So let's try it. I already like what I see. So this one, once it settles a little bit, it should show us something quite incredible. I love the glow already that you get here from the PY150. So let's move on to the next color. With these colors, always best to wait until they're fully dry. Oh, this is also generously filled. So a neutral tint, we have PBK6 and we have PV19 and PB15 colon 3. Oh, that's interesting. So neutral tint tint is another kind of great alternative to Payne's grey I'd say. So here it looks a bit too dark but if I'm going to lift some you can see how gorgeous it is. And these look quite good together. Next ones I've got here sepia and I've got indigo so let's start probably with sepia. So with these ones you want to mix them up because they're pigment based and this is a PBK7, PR112 and PY83 for the sepia color. And once you mix it up, you can just squeeze them out like that. You only need a little. They're very dense with pigments. So there you go. 
That's a very typical sepia. So next one is the indigo. I have quite a few blues from the FW line, but I thought I'd like to have indigo as well. Oh, wow. Hmm, didn't expect it to be that blue. In the bottle it looks quite different. So it is PB15, which I can see here quite strongly. PR122 and PBK7. Interesting. To me this is like a, kind of like a Prussian blue maybe? I don't know. I was thinking of indigo to be more red toned. In the camera, it doesn't come off as green as this. This is like almost, almost to a turquoisey kind of green color. Okay, so then and let's carry on with the gouache. So we have ash, rose. So with gouache, I don't kind of like it when it's water towed. So I'm just going to create these kind of thick mixes. I like using gouache like I would use acrylic paint. Very dry, so minimal water on there. Ash blue. I suppose I can pull it out just a little bit to show you that if you wanted a more watercolor effect, you could achieve that with these paints. I'm just going to do that. And that's the whole point of the acrylic gouache so that you can have either like a watercolor effect or an acrylic effect. Okay, then the next color is Viridian. I'll go straight onto the paper. So in the camera it looks more red toned, here it looks like Taylor Green actually. And then we have Burnt Sienna, oh this is beautiful here, very very nice colour. It actually is more beautiful than I kind of had the idea of it by looking on the Jackson swatches. All right, this is a gorgeous burnt sienna. And then finally, I have got this gorgeous leaf green, very excited about it. With this sort of color, it's sometimes hard to tell until you properly swatch it out and let it dry. Sometimes the color can shift a little bit just going to pick up some of the water from these swatches. Okay, so leaf green. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, I think this is the color I wanted. Vibrant, juicy, and still looks good when watered out. But it's more into yellow tone with less pigment in there. Okay, then we have two acrylics and I'll do it how I like to swatch my acrylic paints. So India Yellow Hue, this is golden and it is heavy body acrylic and it's transparent. So let's squeeze some out. So, love the transparency here. So, we have that paint, and then we have Paints Grey in Liquitex. So, the reason I like to swatch it like that is because of the texture. I don't like any water in my acrylic paints. I think if I want to use water, I'll use watercolour or gouache. 
but with acrylics I love this texture and once you start adding water you're just diluting the beautiful color as well so that's a gorgeous paints gray okay then I have two oil sticks here which I will go ahead and open them if you haven't seen me use them before I'll just show you basically they come in these individual plastic things which you can keep them in I don't I keep them in a tray let me just show you how I keep mine when I work with them so typically I would have something like that sometimes I also have them in cups uh, standing up uh, but this is how I like working with them and just putting them into these trays and keeping them that way so I'm going to start with the Mars Violet first so with these I work the same way so actually I was expecting that to be transparency because the other violet color I have has a lovely transparency to it and really interesting color so this one is not this one is quite flat actually so that's interesting and then let's try the Prussian blue that's a nice color but I think I would mix it with something rather than using it on its own and probably the same goes for the Mars violet so this one has more transparency to it so here we go I just wanted to show you something so the color that I really fell in love with was Mars yellow and so therefore I thought the other Mars colors would have the same um, character and they don't so just in case you were interested in these colors I'm just going to show you the Mars yellow which I absolutely love so here is Mars yellow can you see how sort of transparent it is um, just trying to think I'll just probably go in with a bit of paint from the stick like that and just build it up so you can build it up to then also make it quite thin I think I've got a bit of paint there so that's the yellow and then this one here yeah and that also I absolutely love this color also again has this beautiful transparency to it okay so we have Mars yellow and Mars red this is not that type of a Mars the Mars violet completely different very opaque um, now the other thing I wanted to show you is this Indian yellow hue oh it's actually interesting here it says Indian and here it says India um, but I'm pretty sure it's the same color oh no here PY175 PY150 and PR206 and this is a series four by the way yes yeah, so it's going to be a bit more expensive and oh no it's a different color PY150 PY175 and then the last color is PR122 whereas here is PR206 so I was thinking it's the same color so anyway I'll just swatch it where shall I swatch it I'll swatch just a little bit here so this one is the fluid acrylic so it has a little bit more movement to it more liquid So you can't build up texture as much on this one color is very very similar I'd say it's pretty much almost the same thing really maybe a bit more orange in this one and more yellow in here so here they are so we have Michael Harding vivid blue moss green and natural tint don't know if you can pick up from this swatch but it is very interesting there is definitely some separation and granulation happening here which is quite unique this color definitely would go into my like top favorite colors natural tint I don't think I'm actually owning a lot of tints to compare it to but I'm quite happy with it the next color Daniel Roni um, FW sepia and indigo Holbein acrylic wash we have ash rose 
I've seen this color many many times on camera I have to say I feel like on camera it looks slightly better than in real life um, ash blue Viridian definitely looks a lot more uh, bluer and a lot less green on the screen versus reality Burn Sienna, good one Leaf Green, great chartreuse would highly recommend it if you're into your chartreuses and then we have this color which hasn't dried yet it's a heavy body but you can see that lovely texture I was able to achieve versus this one which is both of them are super transparent, but you just can't achieve much texture with the fluid acrylics. They're gorgeous to go over other colors. Okay, then we have Mars Red, Mars Yellow, which brings us back to these colors. So this was the Mars Violet, very, very opaque color. Nothing compared to these Marses, not sure why. I would expect the texture would be similar, but it's not. So this was the heavy body golden acrylic in india yellow hue and this is indian yellow hue and you remember that there is just one uh, pigment difference in there then we have liquitex heavy body paints gray lovely color fantastic alternative to a black this is a great beautiful color to add that lovely contrast and then we have Mars Violet and Prussian Blue, which are Senelia oil sticks. Here I love the transparency at least, so I could do something interesting there. So I hope you found it uh, useful and inspiring. So happy creating during the festive season and take a lovely break, recharge your batteries. And I will see you for the next whole video in the new year. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.